Hi, my name is Erin Hogan-Breaker from the 7th Bone Tailoring team. Today I want to show you how to add a cuff as the finishing detail on a pair of pants. This works best for woven pants, you can also do it for knit. All you need is enough length to be able to create the cuff and we'll go over that. First step, let's try them on. The trick is, when you bend down, keep your leg as straight as possible and then start to fix them how you like them. Get an approximate length, stand back up, and see what's happening. I'm gonna pin both the front and the back, but we're gonna go off the back length. Before you put your pins in, a really important thing to do is to pin out the waist first. These are fine, so I like where they're sitting, but any adjustment to the waist is gonna affect your hem, so pin your waist first. I'm ready. So we're back from our fitting and we have our pants. Now if you notice, in the front it's slanted up. It's more difficult to create the slant, so we're going to save that for another lesson. What we're going to do is we're going to ignore the front pin and we're going to go off the back. Now we're doing this because I don't mind if it's puddling up on the front. I think that looks good for this style. But I do care if the back's going to be too short. So we're going to keep the back and ignore the front. Just take them out. Now what I did is I put my pin in the fabric so it's basically flat. And then open up your fabric and this is the back of your pant. Turn your pants inside out. Now if your pants already had a hem or an existing cuff, you would want to press them out completely before you start your fitting. You want to start with a clean slate. Mine were unfinished, so we'll go ahead and create the cuff. Now to create our cuff, we need to find our inseams and outseams. And what I want you to do is to put your outseam to inseam on each pant and then put all four of those seams together as one. And shake, give it a little shake. Now when you lay it down, you want to keep in mind which is the front and which is the back. We do know because our pin is in the back. Today I'm going to use Taylor's chalk in order to mark these pants. I never ever want to use a wax chalk because it will leave a mark of oil when I hit it with the iron, and we're about to do a lot of ironing. So a dry chalk is best. Normally I would use a white that will disappear, but for today we'll go ahead and use red. So as you can see, here's my pin, and I'm just gonna put a little mark where my pin is so I can remove it. Now once again, we're gonna check in on our inseams and outseams. Right here, this is important. We want these all lined up. We want everything as flat as possible. And our next step is we're going to take a pin and put it just above our mark. Now I'm gonna put a thread tack in here so you can see it the whole time. This mark is going to be the finished edge or the finished length of our pin. Okay, so we are not going to slant our pant. It is possible, but that's for another lesson. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our ruler, put it here, don't even look at the numbers. Just take your finger, and wherever it lines up with the hem, move it all the way over, and do that same marking over here. Now what you have is a parallel line from the bottom of the pant. Now you're gonna create three lines. And in order to chalk, you want to apply a lot of pressure on the ruler and you want it to be evenly distributed. So I want pressure here, middle, and the end. And this, this makes a big deal. And you're gonna do a line. Now my chalk is sharp. It's important to have sharp chalk right now. You can use a razor blade and you can sharpen your chalk. We're about to go through a few layers of fabric, so we want a fine point and an accurate edge. So we have our first line. This is our finished edge, the length of the pant. Now we need to decide how wide our cuff is going to be. I want mine to be one and a half inch, and lucky for us, the world makes cuff rulers. So as you can see, this ruler is exactly one and a half inches wide, created that way specifically to help us tailors build beautiful cuffs. I like the metal version instead of the plastic grid ruler when I'm doing this. And the cuff 
Width, it varies. So one and a quarter is more fashionable. One and a half is a classic men's cuff. One and three quarters, you're then ordering into uh, more expensive brands, more luxury appeal. If you think of Ralph Lauren, Tom Ford, they have those big, chunky cuffs. So we're gonna stick with normal uh, ready to wear, which is one and a half. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to use my cuff wide ruler and it is one and a half inches and put it just below my first line, exactly. And again, pressure. And you go one, fold it up, pressure. And again, and here we're really taking our time to smooth this back and apply pressure because these are our, our tailoring lines. We want them to be exact. And I'm gonna jump up here because I didn't do all four layers here. This is our finished edge, line number one pressure, open it up, push it back, and you can see our other line, and again, pressure, okay, so we're going to go one, two, three, we need a third line. And really take your time, scoot this up and apply the pressure. You want the fabric to be taut. And then we're gonna have one more line. This final line is our cutting line. So four lines total, one, two, three sections. They all start below here. So now what you can do is you can cut. This aside. Now we do need to check something. So cuffs don't live below our finished edge. They actually come up like this. Correct? So that means this measurement here, one and a half inches up where it's going to sit, this width needs to be the same all the way down. And these pants are good, store bought. If there was an adjustment that you needed to make, you could make it here on the inseam or the outseam. What we want to do now is this is gonna be all about pressing. So I want you to take the second line, one, line number one has our finished edge, two. Fold that line down, but don't just fold it down, fold it down in four places. Side seam, side seam, front and back. And when I pin, I'm pinning exactly on my line. Exactly. I'll even use my pin to create a crease. Again, line number one, line number two, fold. So you do it to one, and then we can do it to the second. So what I want you to do is then take your pant crease. And we're gonna start with the out seam, then the in seam, work our way to the front and the back, because front and back are the most visible. So we wanna get some beautiful creases, but we wanna get them first stabilized on the outside. I love this shark iron. You can pull your pins out. I'm using some silk organza as my pressing cloth. And I'm doing what's called a hard press. So I'm actually using some muscle. I'm actually using some weight. Spin it around. So inseam, outseam. And now we can do the front and the back. So here's where you want to be careful. You don't let that little eighth of an inch scoot up. You want to get it exactly. And another thing to check is your seams should be touching each other. Everything should be lining up easily at this point. These are wool pants. They love steam. So same thing here. You get it exactly.
You also want to make sure that you're pressing out this crease so it's not facing the opposite way in your pants. Okay, and once you have the basic of it, you press some more. Take it to the ironing board or a flat surface. And you continue. See how it's rippling here? So I'm doing out seams and now I'll flip it. And I'll do my in seams. And again, you're going up high enough to get rid of these creases. Okay, so now here is another one of my favorite pressing parts. Really, the only sewing that we're going to do is to hide this little stitch. So you have a few options. You can use a serger to finish this. You could use some kind of a seam binding. I'm going to just fold mine over. So again, I'm gonna start out seam or in seam. I'm gonna go about a half inch down. So basically you're gonna take a half inch, fold it under. I'm not pressing hard, so I didn't need my cloth just then. Okay. And keep folding this half inch under. Switch again. what you press is there. Get your little half inch. And then to the front and back. And this you can eyeball. And last part. So now that we have this, we're gonna pin. So you wanna put your pins in the way that it's going to work with the machine. So you really only need four. Now what you wanna look for right here is if anything is pulling. If you see any little pulls at all, what you wanna do, come with your razor blade, just open it up just a little bit. Our machine, we're gonna to set to a long stitch. So let's do a four. We don't want it too big that it starts to bunch the fabric. This is still a very lightweight wool. And we're just going to straight stitch. I'm stitching about an eighth of an inch from my seam. And then you see here, just pull it a little bit. We're using our pressing cloth because this part of the fabric is going to be exposed to the outside. So we want to make sure not to leave it with a shine. Outside, inseam. Back. So now our cuff is ready to be turned up. Take your pant and turn it right side out. Okay, now figure out where's your front, where's your back, where's your out seam. You want to know what you're looking at. Now here you can see we have our original finished edge. So the red mark is where we want the end of our hem to be, which is perfect because we're planning on turning this up anyways, and our cuff is going to be up one and a half inches. Now in order to make this really beautiful and not lose all that nice ironing, we're going to make sure that we maintain the measurements we have. So go side, side, front, back again, and pin. Again, you're going to come to the front, 
and you want to make sure you have the exact amount, not an eighth over, otherwise what's the point? So before we put this into the machine and do the final tax, what we're going to do is press it. Same thing. Make sure not to lose all the work you just did. And now we really need our cloth. Because we're working on the beautiful outside edge. So I did my out, out seam. We're gonna put our pin back in because we're gonna go with the machine and do a, a tack. Next out seam. You can get it wet if you want, it's wool. Now we can go ahead and we can put our final tacks in. Now these tacks, your seams are gonna be lined up and what you want to do is you want to put a tack, you don't want it right here tacking the lip. You want that to be a little bit loose. It will look more beautiful, more expensive if you have a little bit of lightness right there. So you wanna start your tack about an eighth of an inch below, 3 16 and it only needs to be about an eighth wide. It just needs to be strong. So it's all about back stitching. So come into your machine. We had a long stitch for going around because we just wanted it to be really light and breezy. And now we can go smaller. So I'm gonna do a two in stitch length. So three steps, that's good enough. Bring it out, clip your threads. Your other thread, switch. For our final step, we're going to press. Now you have this beautiful crease here from the front, so you want to make sure that we're going to replace that. But also, we still want to make sure that the edge is very sharp. So now line up the crease and really smooth out whatever's going on inside of there. And if the crease doesn't lie flat, don't force it. It can be on this side and be on this. It doesn't have to be one flat pant, just as long as it's a sharp crease. And I'm gonna just work on the crease first, give it some real muscle, and then come to the cuff. And now we're gonna do this crease. And then it's very important at the very end, no matter which side you, you pressed on, go back to the outside of the pant because it's most visible to the eye. And then here is where you're going to really finely put the finishing touches on your pant. And there you go. So you can see the small little stitching there. And then we also have the top stitching, so it's very secure. A beautiful and easy way to finish your pants. Thank you for watching. For more tips and tricks on sewing, please visit Bernina's WeAllSew.com blog and be sure to check out the 7th Bone Tailoring team. Thank you.